Standing here, I can begin to imagine what Hannibal Lecter's larder must be like. In fact, this is an awful wholesaler, specialising in the bodily extremities and internal organs of pigs, cattle and sheep. What you'll see here is not just the familiar liver and kidneys, but all kinds of things that you'd probably never see in your local butcher. For most of you watching, this probably looks like some bizarre video nasty. But for me, this is heaven. A glorious, gory treasure trove of culinary possibilities. There used to be dozens of traders here in Smithfield, specializing in these spare parts. This is one of the last. The reason that one of my favorite foods may soon be off the menu is simple. It's because you won't eat it. Would you eat that? No, thank you. Are you sure? Positive. Do you know where it comes from? Point to the bit of your head where you think it comes from. Oh, God, it's a brain. Have you ever eaten brains? No, never. Would you try them? No. Why not? <laughs> because they look disgusting. Tongue? No. Tripe? No. Would you try them? No. Well, I would try things I would know, really. Right, but you won't try anything new? No, I wouldn't, unless someone else has tried it. Would you eat them if I gave them to you? No. Why not? They don't look good. You wouldn't eat them, though? No way, no. OK, thanks very much. <laughs> so what is it about offal that people find so offensive? We've no necessary reason for being squeamish about offal. Uh, in a large number of different cultures around the world, offal, different body organs, are very highly valued and greatly prized. For instance, among the Sioux, the American Indians, freshly killed buffalo, you cut out the liver and you present it to a young hunter as, as, as one of the very highest of honours. Whereas in our society, we have a much more distant relationship to animals. You walk into a supermarket to buy some meat, and what do you get? You buy it on a plastic tray, wrapped in plastic, and if you didn't look at the sticker on the wrapper, it would really be very difficult to tell what animal the meat came from. But offal is different, because you can't hide its nature. A tongue looks like a tongue. A kidney looks like a kidney. Brains look like brains. But despite its unambiguous appearance, the British haven't always been repulsed by offal. In Victorian times, such dishes as braised pig's head and boiled tongue were considered a great delicacy. In her famous book of household management, Mrs. Beaton lists almost a hundred different offal recipes. But during the Second World War, offal soon lost its status as an occasional treat. It became essential protein. Rationing meant that, more than ever, every edible body part of an animal had to be used and offal came to symbolize the frugality of the times. But during the 1950s, shortages and rationing soon gave way to the era of you've never had it so good. People were keen to show that they were moving up in the world, and one way of doing so was the conspicuous consumption of the prime cuts of meat. The message was, we don't have to eat those nasty bits anymore. The result of this demand for cheap red meat was the modern technology of intensive farming, and it's still with us today. But no amount of technology can produce pigs without trotters or sheep without brains. So with the meat industry currently producing thousands of tonnes of edible offals every year, where does it all go? Some of it goes for pet food, and some of it's buried in the ground illegally. But in fact, a surprising amount of offal is eaten by humans without them even knowing it. The food industry has been feeding us offal in secret for years. We get it in our sausages, in our pâtés and in our meat pies. So clearly we don't really mind eating offal at all. But while millions consume it unwittingly, a minority has begun to embrace offal not just willingly but ostentatiously. What has happened is that the upper middle classes, in order to display distinction from other people who haven't quite as much money but are still eating prestige cuts of meat, those members of the upper middle classes have revalued offal. They've turned around and said, this is good food, this is what we ought to be eating, as a way of saying, look, we're different. At the Four Seasons Hotel overlooking Hyde Park, French chef Jean-Christophe Novelli has made a name for himself cooking imaginative food for the gastronomic vanguard. His passion for offal began when he moved to Britain to cook in a Hampshire restaurant. I had to find a way to introduce myself. Uh, I had to make a, an impact. I had to be different. 
and also I could not afford to use very expensive product. And the whole idea, according to the area, was to introduce something like pig trotters, offers, which are, are cheap. Uh, and there is a specific market for it. And that was the biggest gamble of my life, is to introduce myself with those dishes. Uh, what, what we do is, uh, at the four season, we start to offer the bouillon, which the ox tongue, and the brain, as a first stage. Second stage, we offer this, this plate, which is um, an oxtail, braise, uh, sweet bread, fry, ox chick, uh, shin of beef, chicken winglets, stuff, and crispy, uh, crispy uh, piglet tail, like spare ribs, you know. And the final uh, dish, which is the ultimate, I believe, out of them, is the pig trotter. Simply braise, caramelized, and stuff with uh, the, ox, the ox tongue and some wild mushroom. I think chefs in swanky restaurants like Offal as a, as a good-natured way of showing off, I and mean, especially in the French tradition, there's a great premium placed on the ability to take humble ingredients, cheap ingredients, and raise them into something special, something sort of imaginative, and uh, for which you can charge a great deal of money. I think there are some signs that um, you're beginning to see offal dishes in, in a wider spread of restaurants, less expensive restaurants. Um, and with that, a, a, a very commendable thing is um, more British offal recipes turning out, things like you know, tripe, tripe and onions, pig's brawn, um, that sort of thing. A bone's throw away from Smithfield Market, Fergus Henderson is doing more than most to revive the British traditions of offal cookery. The motto is nose to tail and eating, which is everything in between as well. There's a whole beast holds all these different things. You've got your kind of usual chops and bumps and sort of whatever it is, fillets. And it's incredibly different, the textures you seem to get with offal. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the joys of one beast. I mean, it is some, something about the, the sticking of the lips together. And then there's also a kind of crunch and then an incredible glutinous giving. One pound, pound of pig's head. I mean, there you've got um, enough meat to feed four or five, and it's so rich and rewarding and delicious for sure. I mean, it is, for economy, awful. I mean, is your, is your thing, I would say. <laughs> I mean, offal does have one big problem, and it's a public relations problem, and it's also more than that, and it's, it's BSE. And uh, it's been made worse by the government's very, very unreassuring attempts to reassure people. All sheep's offal are completely fine. Tripes, brains, sweetbread, all pig's offal, even things like cow's tripe. There's, there's, there are a lot of things you can eat that are fun to cook and very, very cheap too. Unfortunately, those of us who are delighted to order exciting offal dishes in some of this country's more adventurous restaurants remain curiously reluctant to buy offal cuts for cooking at home. There are a few signs that the supermarkets are beginning to catch on. Some even have a section labelled offal at the end of their meat counter. At the moment, the choice is limited. But if we respond, then their range will have to expand. If you can't find the offal you want in your supermarket, try the butchers. Even a butcher who doesn't stock a lot of offal knows exactly where he can get it from. So I'd like to see some guts on the part of consumers. Don't be lily-livered. Vote with your trotters and use your brains. Mm -hmm.